my friends are since. Hello, I've had a bunch of people asking me about the workflow when you're using the Dirty Wave M8 tracker. And that makes sense because really, if you're watching music that's been put together on YouTube with something like this, it isn't necessarily obvious what the connection is between the kind of numbers and symbols that you see on the screen and the music that you're hearing, especially not if you've never used a tracker before. And even if you have used a tracker before, Things like the Polyend Tracker have quite a different workflow to the M8 and to things like LSDJ. So I thought I'd put together a video going through the very basic building blocks of a song, the different kind of foundational elements of the Dirty Wave M8, so that if you're interested, you can see how things work and perhaps, you know, go try it out yourself. If you use LSDJ or ever have used LSDJ, then all of this will be very comfortable for you because it's very heavily based on that workflow. So if that's kind of your background, perhaps this won't be as interesting, but maybe you just want to see how the M8 compares. So, you know, welcome all and all. There's a few caveats to give you up front, of course, as always. First of all, this is just going to be a very basic tutorial. It's not going to be some comprehensive in-depth thing. That's partly because there's far too much in the way of advanced features in here to explain them all, but also because I'm still figuring out all the different bits and pieces myself. So if you do have more advanced questions, then I would recommend dropping in to the Discord channel. It's quite active and there's a whole bunch of people in there who are more than willing to give assistance and tips and help. So I'd recommend going and checking that out if you're wanting to know specific things. The second thing, clarifier or, you know, I don't know, the caveat to give you is that I'm running this not on the M8 hardware itself, but I'm using the headless version, which is essentially the free software that you can download and run on a Teensy 4.1 development board. I've got mine set up and running on my Mac, but you can also use something like a, a, a Raspberry Pi as a kind of display or various other devices like PCs and stuff. The third thing to say is that I'm not going to tell you all of the button combinations to press or anything like that, because there is a quick start guide out there that you can go and read, and it's very clear on the different button combinations that you need. But also, there's not much point in me telling you the button combinations because as I'm running the headless version, I've got the buttons configured to my particular Bluetooth SNES controller and it won't necessarily be the same or make much sense to you if I'm telling you which buttons to press to do what. So go away and read the quick start guide if you want to know the controls. To kick things off, this is the screen you'll see when you load up the Dirty Wave M8 tracker. Yours might look slightly different in terms of colour, that's because you can customise the theme, but we'll come on to that in a minute. On the main section here, we have our kind of song arrangement with the different tracks. On the right hand side, you will see down the bottom right that we have a menu navigation icon or legend which tells you whereabouts within the application you are. And on the right hand side here, you'll see the numbers highlighting on the right up and down as I move along. This is where the various pitches of each track will be displayed. So whatever note or pitch has been played at any time on the particular track, it will show up here. Above that indicator, you can see T120, which is the current tempo. And then on the left, we have our main song arrangement board. We have eight columns here, and each column represents a different track. It might be helpful to think of each track as assigned to a particular instrument. For example, track one for your main melody, track two for second melody, track three for the bass, track four for, I don't know, snare drum, five for kick drum, whatever it might be. However, the important thing to note is that on trackers, each track can be multiple different things at once. So it can be a snare drum, but it could also have a guitar sound. It could have whatever waveform you've got in there. Each step is what defines what's going on, not each track. But for the sake of simplicity and organizational purposes in your mind, perhaps it's a wise idea at the outset to think of certain tracks as being mostly dedicated to certain instruments. 
and all of that will become a bit clearer as time goes on. Now there's eight tracks and there's a whole bunch of different rows here and this is essentially the steps within your song or the next sections within your song. But before we go into that and get into all of the arrangement stuff, I'll show you some of the other main pages that you'll want to be aware of. And if you watch down the bottom right, you'll see the menu or the menu page navigation thing will move as we go through the different pages. So if I go up the way from song, you'll see we come to P, which is project. This is like project properties or the file menu, essentially, if you're on a Mac, for example. And this is where all of the meat and potatoes of your settings are held. You've got tempo values in here. You can transpose the whole thing up, down, left, right, whatever. You can set up your MIDI settings. You can load and save your projects, give them the names, whatever it might be. You can edit your theme, which is very nice. So you can have your custom colors for everything on here. And you can also render everything down either to a mix or to a part uh, to stems, which is brilliant because then you can take the stems out, stick them in a DAW. Fantastic. Everyone who knows my channel will know that I'm a big fan of that. The bundle allows you to do the same thing, but it also includes any samples and stuff that you've used. So you can have like a song or project bundle saved so that you can take it away and put it on a, you know, another instance of MA and it's all there. You don't have any of your dependencies stored elsewhere. So that's the project screen. If we go back down through the menus again, past song, we'll just, you'll see that we come to the mixer. It's a very self-explanatory. You have the mixer levels for each individual track, but you also have the levels for each individual effect. If we go down again to X, I don't know what X stands for, but either way, we have our different individual uh, effect settings in here. So global effect settings in terms of uh, reverb, blah, 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 feedback amount and the delay, all that kind of good stuff. Now, the other menu pages relate to particular elements within instruments and songs and stuff. So I'll show you some of the arrangement kind of uh, setup or philosophy at this stage. Now, a song is composed of different chains. So if I create a chain here, you'll see that we now have a chain called 00. zero. This can be any kind of value up to FE. So you can have chain, you know, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, whatever it might be. Because I'm on track 1, I'm going to set up my um, chain to be chain 10, just because that's an organisational thing I like to keep. So I have an idea of which chain is on which track. It, it helps later on when things get much more complicated. But if we go into chain 10, you'll see that we now have this screen. And each chain can be made up of different phrases or is made up of different phrases. So if we create another phrase here or a single phrase here, I should say, then we'll create phrase 10. And if you go in, this screen is essentially like the sequence. So a phrase is like a pattern in poly and tracker language or just a sequence. And you'll see along the top, we have NVI and various different other things. The first column is for your note values or your pitch values. So if we go through and stick a bunch in, it will hopefully become clearer what's going on here. You can, of course, vary the octave and you can also vary the note value. So we'll just add in a couple of different things here. The second column is in relation to the volume. I believe it's volume. I thought it was velocity at first, but yes, it's volume. Just now it's at 64, but you can go up to 7F, which is the loudest. I'll just keep it at 64 for now. This is your instrument column, which we'll come to in a second. But we also have our effects columns, and this allows you to add on per step effects for each uh, phrase. So essentially you could have different effects and modulate different things on each step, but also three different effects at once. And this is pretty good compared to, for example, the Polyon Tracker that has two lanes, but it also has a huge number of effects. So when I come back later, I'll show you um, exactly what that entails. Anyway, if I press start here on this phrase, you'll see that it starts playing through the sequence, but we're not getting any sound. And the reason for that is because we haven't specified an instrument or we haven't set up an instrument for the particular notes that have the instrument value zero, zero. So if I go into instrument, I'll go right, you see there's no instrument loaded. And within the instrument page, we have various different options for sounds. 
We have a couple of, or a few different synthesis engines. We have Wave Synth, which I believe is based on the old Game Boy sounds. We have a Macro Synth, which I believe is based on the open source Mutable Instruments oscillators from the Braids module. It's the same ones that are in their Turia Micro Freak, so it's got quite a powerful set of sounds in there. There's also a sampler where you can load in your own samples, which is awesome. Uh, we've got the MIDI out section here, which I'm not going to talk about just now. And we've also got an FM synth, which is a relatively recent addition to the firmware. So for now, all I'm going to do is just use a kind of bog standard old Game Boy Pulse sound, and I'll play through our sequence. You can hear we've now got sound. If we go back to the thing, the phrase screen, you'll see it playing through. Now, that's fine, right? But we want to vary up the sound and vary up, you know, change how it sounds because at the moment it sounds a wee bit droning. So there's a whole bunch of options here. For example, uh, the different effects sends or the effect level, I guess. I'm not entirely sure what it is. It basically changes the amount of effects for your particular instrument. So let's say I'm playing this and I'll stick the reverb up. You can hear that. Chorus. All that good stuff. But you can also change, of course, the filter stuff. You can modify the waveform in various ways, which is very nice. What I want to do is change it so it's not just a constant drone. So I want to apply an envelope to the amplitude or to the volume. So we go up a page to what I believe is the envelope page. It's called E, so I'm going to go with that. We have two envelopes and we have two LFOs. With the LFO, you can route it to a whole bunch of different parameters. So for example, I could route it to the pan. If you've got headphones on, you'll hear that bouncing left to right. But you can also route it to things like the pitch. And of course, the various other parameters on there. But for now, what I want to do is apply an envelope to the amplitude so that it's not just doing the, you know, constant droning thing. So do that, dial down the decay. And that's much more manageable. So there, we have a basic sequence set up. Superb! So if we go back now to the song screen, you'll see that we have our chain 10 with our single phrase in here. And if we press play, it'll just play through that. And it'll loop it indefinitely. So let's say within this chain, we want to have four phrases, so however many bars that is. We would add in our extra phrases here, and then if we play that, it'll go through each phrase and just loop. Right. Now there's a few different ways we can vary these phrases or these patterns. We can either transpose the individual phrases here, so we'll go up an octave, and that means we'll get some kind of variation without having to change the phrase itself. Beautiful. The other way we can change things is by copying the chain, or eh, sorry, copying the phrase, going in and modifying it. So now this is phrase 11 rather than phrase 10. We can add in a couple of wee bits and pieces. And then if we go back here now, let's change that to 11 as well. And of course, you can get the idea, you can have multiple different variations of the chain. You could add in a couple other bits and pieces. Well, that sounds terrible, so I'll <laughs> adjust that. Great. Now, before I go back into the song arrangement thing, the thing you should note about trackers is that you can vary almost everything per step or per note, really, or per row, I guess, depending on the way you want to think about it. So at the moment, we've got these phrases and each step is playing the same instrument. But what we could easily do is duplicate the instrument so now we've cloned instrument 0 into 0, 1, and then we can modify that instrument so it's got a different kind of sound. And then, let's see, add in a wee bit more reverb or something like that. And then if I press play, and I'll modify a couple of these uh, notes to a different instrument, you'll hear that on these steps, they're now going to play the modified instrument. 
And if we go in and do the same for our other uh, phrases, and then play through this. And that already sounds pretty cool, and you can see how you can get some quite deep uh, variation and dynamics just by changing things for each step. And this is where the effects come in and are quite interesting, because you can also apply them per step and have three chained together. So you can either cycle through them. For example, this SRV is the reverb volume. So let's say on this step you want to have a much louder reverb. Then you could apply that, and then this step will play the reverb at that value. It'll be easier to hear in this step. But you can also tweak a whole host of parameters, and if you hold the button down and go up or down, you can see this massive list of different effects and different um, commands that you can send. So for example, you can vary the different parameters of the synth itself. Uh, let's say like the oscillator type, the oscillator size, the shape, without having to duplicate and create a new instrument. So let's say we want to do that. Yeah, I'll do it now. And you can also add lots of things like slides, which I can't remember the command for now. Where is it? It will be sequencer commands. There's so many commands in here that I often find it quite hard to remember which one is which. Ah, uh, note slide. So let's do... Um, and you get the idea. Each step allows you to vary things to quite a large degree. Now, now we have our song, but it's only a single chain, and it sounds cool, but what do we do with that? Well, we can obviously set up different chains here, and if I press play, it'll play through, and it'll go through these three rows, and then it'll go back to the start and loop. But that does not make a song, so what we want to do is add in the different uh, tracks and bring in some different sounds. Now before we do that you'll note that when I press start here only the first track is playing and so let's say I wanted to bring it in track two. If there isn't an active chain on the relevant track then it isn't going to start playing so this one won't come in and start playing if this is just blank. So you see once it gets to the end of the chain and moves on to row two this isn't playing, and you might be like, what the fuck, why is track two not coming in? And that's because we need to create an empty chain so that track two, or so that the M8 knows you want that track to play from the point you press start. So, there's different ways to do this. This is a hotly contested topic within the world of tracker music or LSDJ anyway. You can either create your empty chain on zero, because zero equals nothing, or you can go all the way up to FE, which is what I tend to do because it's at the other end of the usable numbers and it's much easier, in my opinion, to see that in the song screen when there's lots of things going on. Of course, you can make this any number, but those tend to be the ones that people do. And you can see it's blanked out at the moment. That's because there's no active notes on there and that's particularly helpful. But if we press play, it's still not working. That's because we need to go in and tell the uh, tell the M8 basically how many empty phrases we want it to play for. So in this case, because our other patterns are uh, four phrases long, or our other chain, sorry, are four phrases long, we'll make four empty phrases in here. Again, you can make these any value you want. It tends to make sense to stick to the same number as the chain or the same value as the chain, so it's clear. You don't have to put any notes in here, but now, when I press play on this, you'll see the track two starts as well. Perfect. So what you do is you'll load up your various tracks that you don't want to be playing, but you might want to bring in later with the FE command or whatever value you have there. It's worth noting, of course, that perhaps you don't want them all to be four uh, phrases long. You might want some to be half that time. So for this, you would go in, you create another empty chain of the time that you want it to be. So 
two phrases of empty phrases here and now you'll see on FD when I press start this will play for half the length of FE. <laughs> Cool. Now, because this is going to loop around, when you want to add in a second track, or you know, third track or whatever, the way I do this to add in other instruments is to avoid going around your whole song and looping from the start. Uh, again, which is quite annoying when you're trying to uh, compose. If you put a row on its own with inactive bits or inactive rows in between, it will only loop that row that's active. So these act as buffers basically. And you'll see once it gets to the end of this, it'll just loop back to the start. So this allows you to indefinitely loop your section so you can add in different instruments. Now what I'm going to do is add in just uh, some drums because I'm kind of still stuck in the LSDJ mindset, in my head the drums are on 4, or track 4, channel 4, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to stick with that for now. Because of my own quirky, or my own mental organisational system, I'm also going to make this chain 40. It could be any number, but I tend to keep each track related to the chain numbers as much as possible because as things get more complicated, it gets harder to figure out where things are. So I'll go in here, I'll create my phrases for my drums. I'll keep the same kind of numbers again. I've got an empty phrase in here, and what I'll do is I'll put in some notes. Now the default uh, instrument, I think, will be the last one you've used. So at the moment, it's just the um, one we set up from before. So I want to set up a different instrument. So I'll go here, create a new instrument under instrument two. Oh, sorry, wrong screen. Uh, go on to the instrument screen, and what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to create, or I'm going to load a sample, and it's going to be, I think, a hi-hat sample. Now, we can give it a name if we want, and if you're organised, then that's, you know, a good idea. I am not particularly organised, so I don't tend to do that, but you can get really anal or particular about how you organise everything. Anyway, going to load my sample. I've got a bunch of samples from samples from Mars that I paid for and downloaded a while ago. I like the 606 samples in particular, so I'll just pick one of them. These are all stored on my SD card or micro SD card. I'll load this one. I'm going to put that amplitude up a bit because I know the sample is a wee bit quiet. Cool. And then if we go back here, I will just, uh, I don't know, just put in a bunch of them. Uh, of course, with hi-hats or anything else, you want to vary some of the parameters here because you want variation in your sound. And this is, you know, the, one of the big strengths of the trackers is the ability to vary things in this way. Of course, what you can also do is vary things by loading another sample in. So let's do that. Uh, this is, uh, let's cycle through. Uh, I don't know what I'll do is I'll load another sample so it's obvious. Let's go into CR78, individual hits, original, clean, uh, closed hat. So now if I change a bunch of these, you'll hear. Cool. Cool. So that's my hi hat thing. What I'll do is vary up the pattern a wee bit. Um, I'll I don't know, delete a couple of bits, add in a couple of bits, uh, duplicate this one. So now if I play this, you'll hear... Of course I can transpose this and all that as normal. That's fine, I've got a pattern. Play this song, loop it. Sounds alright to me. I'm going to add in a big stinky kick drum. Uh, for that, I won't load a sample, even though I normally would. What I'll do is I will use the braids oscillator. And come on to a different instrument. Load up the macro synth, and I believe there's a kick in here somewhere. Where is it? It kick. So, so that's fine. I guess we want to change the timbre. Uh, oh, cool, I'll bring that down again, so that sounds pretty good. Um, and then what we'll do is just I'll go for a bit of a four on the floor hang, right? Oh, 
forgot to change the instrument for this. Change the volume. Okay, and then. I'll change this a wee bit because that extra. Don't want that extra hit all the time. So you can see now how a song is starting to build up. So let's say I want to uh, repeat that. I've copied the row, pasted it in here. I'll paste it in a few times. And if I hit play on this, it'll just loop these sections here. But let's say now I want to vary this whole chain. So what I can do is I can either clone the chain like this. And what this does is gives us a new chain, which I can then rearrange these numbers in. Uh, so chain 11, will now have this 12, 0, 11, 11, and chain 10 will keep 10, 10, 12, 11. But if you want to change the phrases within a chain itself, you need to do a deep clone, because if you clone something and then we go in here and change phrase 12, then that's obviously going to affect phrase 12 and chain 10 as well. So let's deep clone chain 10, and you'll see it says clone chain and phrases. This gives us new phrase numbers and these are the same as the chain we just cloned except they have different numbers so if I change these it's not going to impact on the other chain or the other phrases so let's let's do, let's do it. so I don't know I'll just change things enough so it's obvious Doo -doo -doo. So let's also do the same with the kick, right? Just to make the example obvious. I don't know how that's going to sound, but uh, I guess we'll see. Uh, okay, so let's hit play and you'll hear the whole kind of arrangement. <laughs> oh yes, it's a bit too uh, mental, isn't it? That's a bit better. And then what I'll do actually just now, just for the sake of it, I'll add in another kind of element here. I'll add in chain 20 onto track 2. Keep it the same length. Actually, the bridge. There's a harmonic in here that I really like.
And that's it really, um, that's how you set up the basics of your song and your arrangement and your instruments within the Dirty Wave Emmet Tracker. Hopefully that's helpful or interesting or at least gives you an idea of what the fuck people are doing when you see these weird numbers on the screen on YouTube. Uh, again, if you've got any questions, feel free to ask, I probably will not have any answers, but uh, the Discord for the M8 itself is available and there's lots of people in there who know far more about what they're talking about so I would encourage you to check that out. Hopefully that's interesting, if so, tell me, if not, uh, well, fuck off. <laughs>